What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we gotta talk about what happened on this episode of Monday Night Raw. Um, wasn't a bad episode, bad go home show. There was some good stuff that I definitely enjoyed. Um, definitely some things that I'm looking forward to how it's gonna play out on SmackDown going into Crown Jewel. So, but the overall show was pretty solid. It wasn't bad. We got some great crash out moments. Love to see that on a Monday Night Raw. So we're gonna talk about some of the more noticeable things that happened on the show. So they started off the show with Jay Uso coming down to the ring. They did a recap of what happened on last Monday night on Jay losing his Intercontinental Championship and uh, to Braun, uh, Braun, uh, Braun Breaker and him kind of retaliating on the bloodline on uh, this past Friday Night SmackDown, costing them the tag team title. So now no members of any uh, bloodline, the OG or the new bloodline have tag team or intercontinental championship gold. There's no gold in all members of the bloodline now. So we're on an even playing field, if you can say that somewhat. So Jay comes out there and he basically like, hey, man, there's one oos I want to talk to right now. So come on out. And Jimmy comes out. Jimmy comes out there. You hear the crowd chanting Uso. It's a cool moment to see them back in the ring together. And it looks like Jimmy's trying to embrace. But Jay's like, nah, we hold on on that. See, things have changed. I hadn't seen you since we faced each other at WrestleMania. Things have changed. They know the difference between us now. They know who you are in Jimmy. They know who I am in Jay. And I was able to win the Intercontinental Championship by myself. So if we are to make this happen, if we are to make this work once again, we, you and me, can't be no yes men to anybody. We are not secondary to anybody. We, we are own men. And I like that he brought that up. Because Jimmy was trying to, you know, hug it out and, and trying to talk. He's like, no, just listen to me. If this is to work, we got to get our respect that we deserve and have earned. This is no longer a dictatorship. We have say in what goes on. And I like that. I like the, the character growth in Jay not being a yes man to no one. That's pretty much what his, uh, you know, his... His role in the bloodline was he was a yes man. Essentially, he was a secondary to Roman. And he's like, we're not doing that no more. We're better than that. And I love that. That's good character growth, a good character arc. Like, I'm not taking this from nobody, not even him. So they finally embraced. And he said, look, that I'm glad that, you know, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to be on the same page. But I'm going to need you to come with me to SmackDown so you can talk to, to Roman so we can so we can get this situated. You know, I'm going to need you to come with me to SmackDown so we can get this situated. All right. Are you down? You know, we, we, we need I'm going to need y'all to talk it out so we can hash this out. And Jay said, you know, what? he's down to go to to SmackDown to talk to Roman Reigns and see if they can hash it out. So once again, they embrace a good moment then all of a sudden the, the the tongans come out of nowhere they start attacking jimmy and jay then jacob fatu uh gets sent into the mix because jacob and uh solo was sitting on the outside jacob fatu gets into the mix and they tie up jimmy in the ropes and they about to essentially pack up jay by putting uh jacob put a chair around his neck and, you know, he's about to run, you know, run the ropes, run, it, uh, run from the opposite uh, corner, turnbuckle into Jay, essentially sending him to the upper room. But ultimately, Jay stops it, throws a chair at his face. Uh, Jimmy's able to, you know, fight off the Tongans. And then he, I believe it was Jimmy. It could have been Jimmy. I think that hit the super kick. I believe it was Jimmy. I could be wrong. Or maybe it was Jay. But one of them hit the super kick on on Solo, on Jacob, he no-sold it. So they had to hit him with the double super kick just to get him out the ring. I love those little facts that certain moves can't stop Jacob Fatu by itself. I love that. I, I really do appreciate that. So 
after that uh played out um of course adam pierce comes out there with security and stuff and he tries to get you know get them to get out of there so later on in the show jimmy and jay are walking in the back and then you see sammy and sammy's not happy to see jimmy as he shouldn't be because of how things played out so he said i wanted to talk to you to you alone so he talks to him alone and basically sammy's like look bro I don't know what you're doing, but you shouldn't be getting involved in this this bloodline stuff. You should. I hope you don't really think, you know, it's a good idea to be trying to talk to Roman, the same guy that has been belittling you, the same guy that's been manipulating you for all these years. Like, you sure about that? Like, I don't think that's a good idea, which he makes a good point from a friend. Like, you shouldn't be trusting this guy. You shouldn't be trusting Roman. After everything he's done to you, you shouldn't even be trying to help him. Let them figure it out. And Jay's point is like, but Solo is a worse uh, version of Roman. He's a worse version of the bloodline. And he's like, man, none of that matters. Let them figure it out. You've done so much great for yourself. You shouldn't be trying to help him or even try to talk to him. And this is when uh, uh jay says something kind of hurtful you know it definitely hurt me and some of the fans out there he said well to be honest uh sammy you not really family and i was like ah that's a tough one that one stung and he walked away and sammy looked at kind of sad there sammy's really good with the puppy dog sad face that that was kind of tough that would hurt so later on in the show jimmy's packing up his bag in the locker room and he's like look Maybe I should talk to Sammy. And Jay's like, I don't think that's a good idea. He's like, look, there ain't going to be no issues. I'm going to just try to talk to Sammy, get him to kind of understand what's going on. And towards the end of the show, before we got into the main event, you can see that Jimmy's looking for Sammy and he sees him. But we don't see what's what, you know, what he's looking at. So Jay tries to, you know, comes around the corner and say, hey, what, what's going on? How to talk with Sammy go? And he's, you know, Jimmy's like, hey, be quiet. And you see Sammy talking to Solo and they're in this black SUV. And you hear the crowd saying, ooh, like what is Sammy talking to Solo about? So it optically doesn't look good. It looked like he may be siding with Solo, but we don't know yet. We don't know what was being said. And that's when Jimmy and Jay was pretty much like, see, it's 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 only family, bro. It's it, they." We can only go with family. And Jay's like, yeet. So, looks like SmackDown is going to be very interesting. We're going to see Jay Uso talking to Roman Reigns and see how that plays out. And I'm very interested to see what Sammy was saying to Solo Sokoa. We're also going to talk about uh, Bronson Reed and Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins comes out there and, you know, he's like, look, man, Bronson Reed, you're, you're a monster. But... You brought out a monster in me that I hadn't seen in a very long time. And I'm not going to lie to you, I kind of like it. So he he's basically letting Bronson Reed know, like, look, you wanted this. You think you're the only monster here in WWE? I can be one too. And he gets interrupted by Bronson Reed on the uh, giant screen. And Bronson's like, look, bro, I see you, you know, see you want to fight. You know, I told... uh. Um, Adam Pierce that I wasn't going to cause no chaos tonight But hey If you feeling froggy Jump my boy That's basically what it was He called him out I'm in the parking lot right now What you going to do about it And Seth said Hey Don't mind if I do My boy Seth took off one jacket To reveal a same blue jacket underneath Underneath took it off Undid his hair He's ready to go to fight and my boy Bronson Reed, like, what's up? There was some JAG security trying to stop it. And Bronson Reed casually threw them to the side. And they began to brawl. Loved it. This is what I want to see on my Monday Night Raw. This feud is very simple. Bronson Reed attacked Seth. Packed him up weeks ago. Seth came back. Got his revenge. Now they just want to destroy each other. I'm all for it. And it was it was a fun brawl. My boy uh, Bronson got hit with the back of the trailer, uh, the eighteen wheeler trailer. The the door got hit with that, even though he kind of jumped into it. I don't know if y'all saw that. And then at one point, it looked like Seth was gonna get slammed through a car windshield, but he didn't. He was able to escape out of it, and uh, he ends up hitting Bronson Reed 
with a curb stomp to uh, Bronson Reed on the hood of the car. Bronson went limp. I'm thinking, all right, that's the end of the segment. That was pretty tough. And Seth talking this time, like, see, I told y'all, you this is what you want. I'm going to give y'all exactly what you want. But in the background, Bronson Reed starts stirring, and he starts throwing the JAG security. So Seth's like, oh, I, I guess we're going to have to run it for some more. Starts going at him again. Eventually, they end up brawling into the uh, the same tractor trailer truck. Uh, Seth gets inside the back of it. And it looks like Seth's going to probably go for another curb stomp onto like these tables, you know, with cables and stuff all on it. But then Bronson Reed throws a trash can at him, gets inside the truck himself, start throwing Seth around the walls of the truck, picks him up and slams Seth Rollins and himself through some tables laying right conveniently behind the truck with production cables and stuff. Great, beautiful spot. Crowd chant, holy shit, great moment. And Bronson Reed got up like the monster that he is. And then Seth let out some hilariously uh, funny noise of pain. Just, ah! I was like, all right, bro. I think you're doing a little bit too much. But that was great. I love that. Love what they're doing with Bronson Reed and Seth Rollins. I don't care who wins. I just want to see more of a crash out. This was fun. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And the last thing I wanted to talk about, I hadn't really talked about too much Judgment Day stuff, but uh, earlier in the show, Dominic was trying to see who he was going to be facing. That was a former world champion in the main event. And uh, Dominic ended up finding out that he's gonna fa he was going to face uh, Damian Priest. Now, here's the interesting, interesting thing. Dom was starting to feel like the rest of the gang didn't believe he could do it. But... Finn Balor was one of the first people to kind of outwardly say he doesn't feel he doesn't know about this match. You know, he's not so certain on it because I know Damian Priest because he's talking about how he recently faced him. I know Damian Priest. I don't know about this. And essentially, he didn't really believe him. And if you paid attention, everyone else like, nah, you got this, Dom. I, I, I believe you. He walked away. Finn Balor walked away and never showed back up in that segment. So it's very interesting that he walked away in, you know, in a situation to support his fellow uh, Judgment Day member. And it kind of plays into what happened at the main event. So main event happened. You expect Dominic to pretty much get packed up for the majority of the match. He's not beating Damien, not clean anyway. So, of course, the Judgment Day get involved. JD and Carlito, as well as uh, Liv and Raquel, they get involved distracting the referee. Uh, Damian Priest packs up Carlito and JD with a steel chair. Love to see that. Gets back into the ring, and uh, he hits Carlito once again with the steel chair. But off the distractions uh, from Liv and Raquel and everything that had been going on, uh, Dominic ends up rolling up Damian Priest for the one, two, three pin. And Dominic Mysterio beats Damian Priest. Now, of course, Damian Priest wasn't going to have that. So what does he decide decides to do? He decides to crash out and proceeds to brutalize Damian, uh, uh, brutalize Dominic Mysterio with a steel chair. It was beautiful. It was great. Seeing Dominic writhe in pain was a beautiful sight. He gets out the ring. Looks like he's done. Nah, 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 nah. I'm not finished with you yet. Gets back into the ring. He uh, hits, um, I believe it was Carlito with the South of Heaven. And then he hits uh, um, Dominic with the South of Heaven as well. Because he deserves it. And I love that. I love the fact that Dominic got beat the hell up. But the interesting thing is, once again, Finn Balor didn't come out there and help. He was nowhere to be found. And... This is going to probably cause some type of conflict with them because guess what? Dominic, on paper, has a pinfall victory over Damian Priest. Finn Balor doesn't. And you know Dominic is going to say, well, I did something you couldn't do. I beat Finn uh, Damian Priest. You can't beat him. There we go. The dissension of the blood, uh, not the bloodline the, of um, the Judgment Day is going to come from within. So, love what they're doing there. That was pretty cool. Overall, like I said, show 
was like a 7 out of 10 for me. It was an enjoyable show, enjoyable go-home show. Definitely interested to see how what's going to play out on SmackDown. I believe it's been already pre-recorded, so I'm going to try to stay away from spoilers as much as possible. But uh, I definitely want to see what's going to happen on SmackDown. I could be wrong. I, I think they, they already said it was because um, I don't think they're going to be in the States most likely i think they're gonna already be overseas so uh um so i could be wrong if it is pre-recorded or not but i believe it is because i know there were some people in the chat talking about no spoilers because it's already been pre-recorded um so we will see how all of that plays out this friday but hey man looking forward to crown jewel definitely going to be doing my thoughts and opinion uh well yeah my thoughts and opinions after crown jewel but i also will be doing my preview and predictions live stream this week so be on the lookout for that but i appreciate all love support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace